What do you have to do on Sunday? We have to go to Mass. Okay. Hey, is Mass an act of worship? Yes. Yes, we worship God at Mass. So the act is to go to Mass. See, that's a commandment. Where does that commandment come from? Uh, third. Oh, well, yes. That comes from the third commandment. But it's a, specifically to go to Mass is a sacrament. I don't know. Finish. This is a very easy question. Very, very easy. Right. Julia. Uh, I don't know. Wait, can you say what, why do we have to, why do we, what, what commandment is that we have to go to Mass on Sundays? The third one. Pardon? The third. Keep holy on Sunday holy. Yeah, but specifically to go to Mass. That just says to keep the holy. The first. No. Mm -hmm. Emily. I'm going to try some. Is it a commandment of the church? It's a commandment of the church. It says we assist at Mass on Sunday from Holy Days and Obligation. Yes. So that's uh, the church commanded that. It's like the Orthodox, I don't know if they have to go to Mass on Sunday. You know, it started from the same thing, but it was, the, it was the Catholic Church that made that special law that we have to go to Mass on Sunday. Today, we say, I'm keeping the day holy, but you won't have to go to Mass maybe. But the church says no, we assist at Mass. Okay? Devoutly. We are commanded to assist devoutly at the holy sacrifice of the Mass. What does devoutly mean? Yeah, Angela. Yes. Piously? yeah. Oh. Yes. With what other good works are the good Christian sanctified festivals? Okay, what else besides going to Mass do you do on Sunday? Zachary? Confession and communion. Confession and communion, yes. Emily? Um, don't we abstain from several work? Yeah, but that's not a good work. That's not, that's not abstain means you don't do something. Angela? Spiritual reading. Spiritual reading, yes. Almsgiving? Almsgiving, yes. It says here, a good Christian sanctifies festivals by attending Christian doctrine, sermons, and a divine office. Christian doctrine, that's catechism class. Christian doctrine, sermons, and the divine office. We don't have the divine office in common here. You can't do that. And then by frequently and devoutly receiving the sacraments of penance and the blessed Eucharist. I think you said that, didn't you, Zachary? Yep, so that's number two. And then by the practice of prayer and works of Christian charity. So other works of Christian charity. And you could uh, teach somebody the catechism. Find somebody that doesn't know it or knows it less than you and instruct them. Instruct the ignorant is a work of mercy. What does the third commandment forbid? <coughs> Zachary. To not go to Mass? No, no, it doesn't forbid us to not go to Mass. That's a double negative. Right. Forbids you to not do something. No. Is what? this about Sunday Mass? No, no, yeah, what else? What, what is forbidden on well, Sunday, Joseph? You, what you is can't forbidden? work so much. Don't work so much. That's it. Don't work so much. Third commandment forbids servile works and any, any other works that hinder the worship of God. So it's supposed to be a day of rest from servile works. <coughs> what is a servile work? Benny. Oh. Yeah. Servile work. Hard work. Pardon me? Hard work. Like Hard work, yes. Unnecessary work. Any work they get paid for or which requires manual labor, like heavy manual labor? No, it's not any work you get paid for. You get paid for non-servile work, really. Work where you serve. What? Work where you serve someone else. Serve someone else? No. You mean like serve, like servants? The servants? Yeah. Serve. Well, the work that a servant would do, yes. But yes, it's manual work. Work that requires the use of the body more than the mind. More than the, the body, more than the mind. So, so. Cutting grass, for example. 
you don't have to think too much about cutting grass. It doesn't take much mental power at all to cut grass. Change the tire, maybe a little bit more. You get the switchboards up with the left notes on and all that. But, <coughs> but not much. So those, those are men who do works for farming. Now they use tractors. Uh, Emily? But what are allowed to go to work on Sunday? Is he doing my dad to go to job? You're allowed to do now servile work. Yes, it says servile work is forbidden. So, so if you're a lawyer, you can work on Sundays. That's not servile work. Okay. Zachary? Okay. So if you had a fence and you were, you were like fixing it and then it was Sunday, but you didn't mind fixing it and you kind of just did it for fun, is that allowed? It's servile work to fix a fence. So, that's Mr. Bershman, he fixes fences. Um, that's servile work for sure, Lily. Really. But why can't you do something that you think is fun? Even if it's hard work, what if you enjoy it? And it is relaxing. If, it, if it's servile work, we can't do it. No. It's a hobby or something. Yes, Lily. Is it a, actually a sin? Uh, yeah. Unless you only do it just a little bit. See what it says in the next question? Turn the page. What servile works are forbidden on festivals? The servile works forbidden on festivals are those works called manual, that is, those material works in which the body has more part than the mind, such as, for instance, are the ordinarily done by servants, laborers, and artisans. artisans. Laborers work with artisans. So an artisan is a skilled laborer, right? A carpenter or a, uh, somebody that makes, makes uh, stuff that takes the skills. See? A laborer is a common laborer. They go out and they line up, be hired on Saturday, so in the morning, and work for the day, or that's a day laborer. Mm -hmm. So they do that still in some places. They're looking for day jobs, so for a job for the day. Uh, Emily? So if your hobby is doing something related to art what artisans do you can't do art on this? Your hobby is what? If if you if as a hobby you do um, some kind of work as an artisan, you're not allowed to do art on this? No, an artisan, no. That's what it says. Ordinarily done by servants, laborers, and artisans. It's right there in the book. What sin does one commit by working on festivals? One commits a moral sin by working on festivals. Brevity of time, however, will excuse from grave sin. So if it's only a short time, it won't be a grave sin. So what would the maximum amount of time be? Well, it's not put down in minutes and hours, is it? I think some authors say less than two hours would not be a grave sin. Is servile work permitted at all on festivals? Lily? Yes. Yes, all right. Right, short amount of time. Are we? Short amount of time. No. On festivals, those works are permitted which are necessary for life or for the service of God, as, though, as well as those done for a great reason, which need be impossible from the pastor. If you have a good reason. So the cows are getting out, you've got to fix the fence. And you can go fix your fence, Jeffrey. You've got to keep the animals and run around the road, run around the road. Something like that. So if there's a good grave reason, then you can do it on the rest of the while work on Sunday. You're also allowed to do work for somebody else on a Sunday voluntarily. Like if your neighbor broke his leg and you can't can't plow his field, uh, you, you don't have time to plow it during the week, you can go on Sunday and plow it for him or something like that. So you're doing it for caring for him because he can't do it right now. It needs to be done. Why is servile work forbidden on festivals? Servile work is forbidden on festivals in order that we better attend to divine worship and to the care of our souls and to enable us to rest from toil. Hence, innocent recreation is not forbidden. So there's your answer. Innocent recreation is not forbidden. Okay. So, 
What else should we avoid on these festivals? We should above all avoid sin. We should avoid that every day, not just festivals. Avoid sin. And whatever leads to sin, we've got to avoid that every day. Such as dangerous diversions and dangerous places of amusement. Dangerous diversions, that's the dangerous uh, entertainment, you would say. Diversions, you hear from the word. But uh, it doesn't say here, but the commandment is to keep holy today. So it's not just one hour of the day. You go to Mass, okay, I gave that time to God, the rest of the day is mine. The Lord's day, it's not the Lord's hour. It's to keep the whole day holy. Do good works the whole day. Or that's why they say go to the divine office. St. Teresa the child Jesus, when she was a little girl, her father took her to Vespers on Sunday afternoon. So you had Vespers in the church, and you took her to Vespers on Sunday afternoon, so they went in the morning and they were back in the evening. Vespers. That's the evening prayer of the church, Vespers. So we don't say it publicly here. That's the third commandment. Any questions on the third commandment? Julia? Um, um, you don't have any? You understand the third commandment? Do you understand it, the third commandment? Um, I'm not sure. You're not sure. You understand it, Joseph? What Should is, you go to Mass on Sunday? Could I, yeah, you're obliged to go to Mass on Sunday. You can go to chapels on Saturday. You can go other days. You have to go on Sunday. Keep the we always Sabbath go on day holy. Yeah, that's right. That's why you go, because you have to go. Well, that's why you go on Sunday, because you have to go on Sunday. See? So if my mom was having a baby... um, my Well, the baby doesn't have to come. No. The baby was already well, my dad can take us. That's right. So you the still have to busy. come. You still have to come. Maybe your mother might be excused from coming. And so, mother can be excused from coming. There's a good reason not to come. But that doesn't excuse you. You gotta learn how to come on your bicycle back to your priest. <laughs> no way. Come on my bicycle. Oh, yes, you could. My bicycle is already flat. Or I think we're going to go on skateboard. All right, anyway. Skateboard. Well, yes, you have to come on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Every Sunday. Mm-hmm. Every single Sunday. And Christmas. Keep the Sundays holy. Keep the Sundays holy. Right. The Sabbath. Keep the Sundays holy. All right, what's the fourth commandment? Uh, let's see, Lily, what's the fourth commandment? Honor thy father and mother. Honor thy father and thy mother. Very good. I was going to say that. Too. What is that command, Joseph? Well, you have to honor your father and your mother. Like do you what know. they say. By obeying them. By obeying them. Yeah. Doing stuff what they want you to do. Yes. Honor thy father and thy mother commands us to respect our parents, <coughs> obey them in all that is not sinful, and assist them in their temporal and spiritual needs assisting their temporal or spiritual needs. So if you see your mother doing something, you can say, Mother, can I come and help you? That's what assist means. Assist means to help somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, very <coughs> what does the fourth commandment forbid, Julia? Um, forbid means you can't do it. I don't know. You don't know? Betty, do you know? Julia. Emily. Um, it forbids you to um, strike your parents, forbids you to talk back, I guess, to your parents. Yes. Forbids you to leave them in need. So if they if you yes. for example, I think an example that was used was if you want to go into the company or become a priest and your parents need you and they rely on you, you can't just go. Disobey. The fourth commandment forbids us to offend our parents by word. Word, so we have to be respectful in our speech to our parents, or by deed, or in any other way. <coughs> word and deed, that, that most things, but if there's any other way, we can't, we can't do that anyway. We can't offend our parents. So that's what the fourth commandment specifically says. 
What other persons does this commandment include under the names of father and mother? Oh, so it's not just father and mother, it's other people as well. Uh, Angela. Are we? You were going to say Aunt Malcolm? Oh. Our superiors? And our superiors, yes. Also includes, that's exactly right. Under the names of father and mother, this commandment also includes all our superiors, both ecclesiastical and lay, which we must consequently, consequently obey and respect. So all superiors. So especially if like if your parents put somebody in charge of you, respect them. Wentz. What does Wentz mean? Zachary. From where? Like From when? where? Right. Very good. Whence are derived the authority of parents to command their children and the duty of children to obey their parents? That's an easy question. Really? What if they don't respect you? The parents respect you? They're like superiors. Your superiors? They're not obliged to respect you. The parents says we have to respect our superiors. It doesn't say the superiors have to respect those under them. The authority possessed, where does the authority come from? Zachary. God. God, yes, God is the author of all authority. The word author and the word authority are from the same word, aren't they? Yes. The authority possessed by parents to command their children, the obligation of children under to obey their parents are derived from God, who constitutes an established family life, in order to, that in it man might have the first helps that are necessary towards his spiritual and temporal well-being. So helps necessary or first helps, that's what the parents are doing towards your spiritual and temporal well-being. St. Paul says uh, you have to even obey the forward. Superiors are forward. The what? What? This is in the epistle of St. Paul. Even the forward, he says. are supposed to give to the children the first helps that are necessary toward their spiritual and temporal well-being. So they start out by making sure you have food, right? That's necessary for your, is that necessary for your temporal well-being or your spiritual well-being? Temporal. Temporal well-being. Food. And then uh, make sure you get educated. Have parents any duties towards their children? Here you go, Lily. Have parents any duties towards their children? This would include superiors. Parents are bound to love, love, support, and maintain their children. Love, support, and maintain to attend their religious and secular education. So the religious education is that you learn the faith. Secular education is that you learn things for the world, like reading, writing, arithmetic, three arts. <laughs> Give them good example. So parents have to give their children a good example to keep them from the occasions of sin. So the parents have to make sure you don't have any occasions of sin around you. They don't let you go some places because there are occasions of sin. So you say, no, you can't go there. No, you can't have that. And today the big occasion of sin is the telephone. The telephone is a big occasion of sin. To correct their faults. So they have to correct you when you do something wrong. Your parents have to tell you, don't do that. And correct means also give you a spanking sometimes. Right? Make you learn. And to help them embrace the state to which God has called them. What does that mean? Help them to embrace the state to which God has called them. What does, you mean? What does that mean, Joseph? What? Your parents have to help you to embrace the state that God has called you. Embrace means to grab onto it. 
Hold it firm. Zachary. Like your vocation, whether you're going to be single or married or a religious order. That's right, yes. Emily. You don't have to encourage you in your vocation. Encourage you? Well, they have to help you to embrace the one your God calls you to, yes. Right. Yes, they can't uh, impede you. Sometimes your parents do that. So, like St. Thomas Aquinas has tried to stop him from going to be a monk because they didn't like the order he was going into. He was a, a, a mendicant, or they were rich people, so he was a rich boy. They didn't want him to go into this poor religious order. If he'd gone to be a Franciscan, that would be well, even worse. Probably St. Francis being there. Dominican. Still was a begging order. Has God given us an example of a perfect family? Julia? Yes. What family is that? The Holy Family. The Holy Family. Who's a member of the Holy Family? Um, Mary and Joseph. Mary and Joseph? And also Jesus, right? He's holy. Jesus is holy, yes. You have to become like him. When we die. What? When we die, we'll be holy like him. No, you gotta get holy now. Otherwise you won't be holy. If you don't get holy now, you won't be holy like him when you die. The way you die is the way you die. If you're not holy when you die, you're not gonna be holy. You can be holy before we die. You gotta be holy before you die. You're supposed to be holy now, Joseph. I am. Alright. <laughs> Good. That's good. All right. God gave us an example of a perfect family in the Holy Family, in which Jesus Christ lived subject to the Blessed Virgin and Saint Joseph until his thirtieth year. What does subject mean? Fake? No, not fake. Is it working? Working? Zachary. Like remains in their control. Pardon? Remains in their control. Yes. Um, submissive to them under their authority. Because he obeyed them. So, so until he was 30 years old. Well, then he went out on his mission. 30 years old. Bill began his mission of preaching the gospel and trusted to him by his eternal father. Well, St. Joseph he died before that, so once St. Joseph died, he wasn't subject to St. Joseph. The Holy Mary was still alive, so she, she lived long. When St. Joseph died, he died sometime uh, when uh, our Lord was still at home. Mary died just like Jesus. Well, she didn't die on a cross. No, no. Jesus died on a cross, plus Mary didn't die on a cross. But uh, so St. Joseph uh, taught to the trade, and then when St. Joseph died, Jesus took over the family business. So mm -hmm. his father. Okay. That's the normal thing to do. If families were to live alone, cut off from one another, could they provide all their material and moral needs? Families living alone, it's your family. No. no? Because you don't get, you need some outside influence because your family, you, your family, you need your family, but you also need other people because, especially priests and nuns to help you. Supermarkets. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Petrol stations. <laughs> yeah. well, that's right. If families were to live alone, cut off from one another, could they provide for all their material and moral needs? If families lived alone, cut off from another, they could not provide for their individual needs. And hence, it's necessary that they be united in civil society so as mutually to aid one another for a common good and happiness. So there's civil society can mutually aid one another. So we have division of labor. So one person does this, another person does that, and another person does that. That's the way it's supposed to work. You know, in the communist way we have today, it's uh, not so good. 
What is civil society? It's the world. It's a group. It's a large group. You're one world. You're one world, are you? It's a large group of people sharing the same, usually nationality, the same, um, living, having the same patriot that they're united under a government. That's right. Civil society is a union of many families under the authority of one head, that's the government, for the purpose of assisting each other in securing your mutual perfection and temporal happiness. So the first end of civil society is temporal happiness. That's happiness in this world. So that everybody has enough sufficient uh, goods and things to be uh, able to uh, Worry about it all the time. Whence comes the authority which rules civil society? Emily? From God. From God, yes, also. Because God established civil society for the common good, for the good of all of us together. I mean, the common wealth, the common good. Uh, so it comes from God, the authority. Also, the government comes from God. Are we under any obligation to obo obey the authority that governs civil society? Zachary? Not necessarily. Like, if it isn't really, like uh, Pope Francis says, you can honor all gods while that's something you shouldn't do. So. Uh -huh. Emily? You should honor um, the head of the civil society. You should obey the head of the civil society unless he is um, ordering us or commanding us to do something which is against the law of God. Are all, we are, yes, all who form part of civil society are bound to respect and obey authority because that authority comes from God and because the common good so demands. We have to respect and obey authority. Are all laws imposed by the civil authority to be respected? Yes, of course, with the command and example of our Lord Jesus Christ, so our Lord obeyed the Roman authority. All laws imposed by the civil authority are to be respected, provided they are not contrary to the law of God. So we have to obey God rather than men. So if they make a law that's contrary to the law of God, then you don't have to obey it. Like, for example, they say you have to get vaccinated. You say, no, I'm not going to get vaccinated. Emily. Well, if, if there's a vaccine which, ha which is technically morally okay, but it's dangerous to your health, you can't take it because God told you to look after your health, isn't that? Well, 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 we, we, well we don't, the, the, the government has no authority to tell you to get vaccinated anyway. It's an abuse of authority. Well, yeah, when they abuse authority, like they do in communism, which we have here, uh, uh, we don't have to obey it. But just when they make all kinds of annoying regulations that are totally useless, then we have to respect them and obey them, I guess. Have those who form part of civil society any other duties besides respect and obedience to the laws imposed by authority? Well, they should help the other members of society. They should help each other. Besides the obligation of respect and obedience to the laws, all those who form part of civil society, that's you, Joseph, are bound to live in peace. So you're supposed to live in peace. And to endeavor what does endeavor mean? Angela? Does it mean like to strive for? To strive for, yes. You could say try, that would be even easier word. Endeavor, each according to his means and ability to render that society virtuous. So you have to endeavor to make society virtuous, Zachary. Are you doing that? Making society virtuous? No. Peaceful. Peaceful orderly, and prosperous. What does prosperous mean? Nostalgia, you know? 
You know Joseph? You heard of St. Prosper? Prosper. Sacred. Thriving. Pardon? Thriving. Thriving, yes. Wealthy. Wealthy, yes. Okay, that's the second, and third, and fourth commandments. Any questions on the fourth commandment? So today we have to, uh, you know, be. All authority is corrupted because they're not obeying God. They're not doing their duty. See, see authority is. Is this the eraser? Authority is delegated. Delegated. Who, who, who? Our Lord Jesus Christ said what? All power. All power. Heavenly. All power in heaven and earth was given to my Father. Yes, all power. So our Lord had all power. Now he shares. So he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So he shares that power with others. So he delegates power, but he doesn't delegate all power. Well, he delegates some power. So he delegates some power to the church, to St. Peter. Church. And he delegates other power to the civil government. And they're supposed to work together. The church and the state. We call this the state. The state. This is the church. So they should be united. So when the people are Catholic, you should have a Catholic government. Now if the people are pagan, well, uh, you're not going to have a Catholic government more than likely, see? So we can go in and conquer them. Then we go and conquer them so we can convert them. The, uh, in the, in, the, in the world in the last few centuries, three or four centuries, England went and conquered a lot of places. But England had left the faith by that time. So they tried to convert the heresy. They brought their heretics along with them to convert the heresy. So the Irish had a, the Irish priests and missionaries had to ride in their coattails and then try to bring the faith to these places. See, because the Britain the government was not united to the church, it was united to a false church false religion. So they were united to each other, but it was false. And that's who conquered most of the world for a while there. They had control of the world. And uh, that's what happened. But the, uh, the Catholic missionaries had to come in behind them or with them and uh, try to bring the faith uh, to the people. Because that's the only, that's the reason uh, to go into a pagan land or something. It's not just to take all their resources and uh, this and that, but to also bring them the faith, and, uh, uplift them, and make them uh, fellow uh, Catholics. That's what the Spanish did in South America. The Spanish went to South America, and they converted the whole continent. The whole continent, the Spanish, Spanish and the Portuguese together, converted the whole continent, and the whole continent became uh, Catholic for many years. That's what the governments are, are supposed to do. Uh, that's the civil authority is supposed to work with the church, so it brings the, brings the missionaries, and then the, 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 the church is higher than the civil government, though, so the church can correct the civil government. And the, the, uh, the Pope can write a letter to the prime minister and say, what you're doing here is not correct. It's not doing it. They're doing good. That's all right. But, uh, that's, that's, but they're supposed to work together, and the, the, government, the state takes care of the temporal needs, but especially it's supposed to provide a temporal environment where it's easy for everyone to save their soul. So the state has to keep away uh, sinful behavior. So the state has to outlaw sinful behavior and outlaw that and uh, uh, bad entertainment. They, ban bad entertainment and we have to ban all these things by the civil laws. Let's know we don't want these corruption here uh, to corrupt us and ban ban bad doctrine. That's why they have to keep the heretics out. So they will corrupt the people who become heretics. 
which is uh, what's happening today in our world, see, because the church stopped protecting the people. Uh, the church didn't do its job, and the governments all collapsed. Paganism, because the church wasn't there to tell them, no, you can't collapse. You have to be good. So they're supposed to uh, work together. All right, we'll stop there. Let's say Rosary. Great. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. And the Lord's redeemed now shall be born as we do. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen.